I would like to give a special nail addict shout out to Angela Taylor, Exotica's Empire, Very Cute Nails, and Tracy's Nail World for being the first four to comment on my last video. I thank you ladies for all of your continued love and support. Hey y'all, welcome back and welcome if you're new. My name is Sheena and if you haven't already, please hit the like and subscribe button and let's go ahead and get into today's set. So I'm using my regular XXL 123 Gold Coffin Nail Tips from Enel Couture, my absolute fave. And then I'm using Off Siesta for my poly gel today. So it is another lazy girl method and I am showing prep. So I'm taking my cuticle pusher and just lightly pushing back my cuticles. My cuticles need work, y'all. I need to take a clipper and clip them and everything like that. But I just be too scared about like removing too much extra skin. So I just keep it safe. Um, and then like a lot of times they'll look rough and then like by the time I'm taking my nails off They look so perfect like the nail has formed pretty well um, So I don't let it bother me. Um, but I'm taking a mandrill and a sanding band. This is before I got my Melody Susie uh, smaller sanding bands and I'm just going around the cuticle very lightly and removing any dead skin that may be there And I'm also going to rough up the surface of my natural nail I'm prepping with this uh, like particular method like removing the dead skin and then like roughing up your natural nail does help for a better adherence so it's really important you can also do this with a hand file as well um, it is possible and then they have like the cuticle pushers and things like that that do have like an extra side where you can kind of scrape up your dead skin like so if you're not comfortable with using an e-file just yet then yeah um, with your e-file, you want to make sure you're being very careful. I always go about 4 to 6 RPMs here um, to remove that dead skin and just like rough up my nail. Just making sure I'm e extra safe and careful and making sure that I'm not like leaving that drill in one spot for too long so it doesn't cause friction and burn me. And then I dust off all of the dust and now I'm taking my McCart dehydrator and I am going in and I am just placing a layer over my nails. So the dehydrator actually does remove any oils from your nail bed. And then I'm going in with my Young Nails Protein Bond, which is a primer and apply a layer of that to my nails. I've been using Young Nails since I started doing my nails and I can honestly say they have never disappointed. Um, I don't want to shade a brand so I'm not going to even say what I was going to say but this one definitely works. There's others I've tried on others like my daughter and her nails ended up popping off. Something that never happened so Young Nails definitely for us works and is the way to go. But I'm starting with a siesta and I'm going to do my normal two beat method that I like to do on my lazy girl nails. Y'all, <laughs> it was getting stuck everywhere. I kept it in. Normally, I'll cut all of that out and just make it look like it was just easy and seamless with no ma'am. It was all over the place. So I did eventually get it on <laughs> and I will clean that polish off my finger, but I just wanted to get straight into it. So I'm taking my poly gel brush with a little bit of like, um, this lip solution that I got from Moravon. So they had on Amazon where they have like their own slip solution. And I should have went with my model ones because I like model ones. But Moravon was coming a little quicker. And I thought I was going to do this video like super quick. So I went with Moravon instead. And I can honestly say no shade to Moravon because I love their poly gels. But this particular slip solution was super sticky i mean the, the slip solution wasn't sticky let me not say that it's it's a water based kind of like feels like a water base but it just like the poly gel was sticking to my brush really bad and i was very shocked because i felt like you know me investing in a slip solution probably would be better than me using the alcohol um being that we all know that alcohol does break down the poly gel from excessive use of it it doesn't bother me though. Alcohol for me is great. It always works pretty amazing. 
um, but I decided I wanted to try to buy an actual slip solution and like try to start using that for my poly gel nails as opposed to the alcohol. And this one, I'm gonna give it a go a, a few more times just to kind of see. Um, and I meant to unbox it on camera, but I didn't, it's fine. But um, yeah, I, I really didn't like it at all. Um, I felt like it just was, my poly gel was sticking into my brush way too much um, for it to be a slip solution for poly gel. It was just, yeah, I never have as much problems as I have with this as I do with alcohol. Alcohol always works very beautifully for me, so I may just stick to alcohol. But I do want to give it a fair try because I got greedy and I was like, you know, it's a, it's a slip solution for poly gel. So I'm going to get two because they have like a, a deal like if you got two. So I ended up getting two and they're really big bottles. I'll show you guys in my next video where I use it. But really big bottles. So it's like I'm hoping it was just me this time and maybe the next time it'll work a little bit smoother. But yeah, invested in a lot of it and... I really didn't like it. Um, so I'm just gonna go in with Asiesta and apply a bead to the tips of all of the nails and blend that down. Then once I get all of the first beads in, I go ahead and pop that in my lamp for a full 60 second cure. So typically when I'm using like XXL nails, I like to do a two bead method because the nail has a great length on it and I don't like the underneath of my nails to be very bulky when I'm doing the two bead method. Also, I do feel like it like helps with the spillage underneath as well when I do the two bead method because like once I get the first bead set, everything is fully cured. So when I go in with the second bead, I typically like to add just enough to cover like my actual nail bed and it works pretty great 99% um, of the time. There are times and I think this was a set where sometimes there's a bit of a bulk underneath and then normally what I do, I don't do it on camera ever, but off camera just because it irritates me. So I always go underneath with my e-file and just like file it flat, file it even, file it to where I can actually see my natural nail. Um, again, because that bulk, it just really bothers me a lot. So I definitely always like to keep everything nice and thin when I'm doing my lazy girl nails. I don't like them thick underneath at all. Um, but here I'm just like focusing on the sides and making sure everything is nice and covered. So like if I turn my nails to the side or anything, you're not seeing like blank, anything blank. Everything has that ah, siesta showing through on the sides and all so very very easy very beginner friendly if you've never tried it this is like one of my favorite methods i definitely love a good poly gel overlay um it's really natural and it just puts me in the, in the mind of a fresh like acrylic set but i definitely love lazy, lazy girl because it's straight to the point and i love it so like these nails i did i ended up wearing both hands for a few days before even putting the designs on because I didn't even really know what type of design I wanted and it just looked really nice with just a base color on either nail set it was really nice and natural to wear it like that so again just a very easy quick way to get really nice nails at home So then when I go in with the second bead, I try not to make the bead too big. Um, and then I do the same technique. I take the poly gel brush with my slip solution and I'm just patting it, you know, around the cuticle. And then I'll go ahead and blend that up into the first already cured bead. Around the cuticle, I do like to make it pretty thin so that when I do place that on my natural nail, um, there is minimal to no spillage. Um, and also, I always say this, but it's very important when you're doing your lazy girl nails, you always want to size up. So whatever you normally wear, you want to size down, I mean. So like, for instance, for your thumb, if you wear a one, you want to go down to a zero, make it bigger for that 
product you're putting in the inside it should sit very nicely on your nails now before i go in and apply my lazy girl nails i always apply a layer of base coat on all of my nails and give that a 60 second cure and doing this it does protect your nail but it also gives that poly gel something to hold on to as well Again, once the base gel is cured, I'm now like like lightly pre pressing that, excuse me, onto my nail. And there's minimal spillage there, but I do go ahead and clean that up as well as I can. And when placing it on your nail, you should not have to force it down. If you have to force it down, um, that lets you know that the nail tip is a little bit too small. And y'all will see in a video that I'm gonna post next week where I did like shorter lazy girl nails and I don't know it's a big difference for me between the shorter and the longer I definitely struggled I definitely applied <laughs> two small nails but it is what it is you know we're not perfect and I'm not a waster so I ended up wearing them and they lasted me for a whole week even though they were a bit tight but you want to make sure you are definitely sizing up and that when you're doing your lazy girl nails you should not be forcing them on they should just go onto your nail very nicely without too much effort um and these nail tips for me, the Enel Couture 123 Go XXL Coffin Nails are like my absolute favorite nail tips to use when I am doing the Lazy Girl Method. I never have a problem. They always fit me perfectly sidewall to sidewall. It's just a really nice application when I am using these and doing the Lazy Girl Method. I like fall in love with my nails. It's like an amazing, amazing feeling. Um, but after I apply each nail, I do cure in the lamp for about 15 seconds just to make sure that it is onto my nail. And then once I get all five of the nails on, I do a full 60 second cure in my lamp um, just to, of course, further make sure that everything is nice and cured. And then sometimes because the product is underneath, I like to go back under for like about 30 seconds with my hand turned upright. And just make sure everything underneath is getting nice and cured as well. I hope that everyone is having an amazing morning, afternoon, evening, or night, wherever you may be. And as always, I thank you so much for joining me in today's video. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you guys so, so much. If you are new to my channel, welcome to the Nail Attic family. And I do thank you so much for joining me on my nail journey. It means everything to me. And if you've been subscribed, I love you guys so, so much. And I'm really thankful and grateful for you all. So once all of the nails are applied, I'm now taking my mandrill and a sanding band. And I'm just going around the cuticle area to make that nice and flush to remove any excess spillage that may have cured there. And a lot of times when I have spillage that does cure like outside of the nail tip, it's on top. So I'm super excited that it does that and it doesn't like stick to my nail. I mean, excuse me. Yeah, my, my finger or anything like that because you don't want that at all. Um, but my spillage normally is just like pretty much connected to the nail. Like a lot of times I can kind of lift it up a little bit and file it right off. Um, so very, very easy. But this step is important just to make it look more flushed and natural. And yeah, I love this. This is like therapeutic for me to just like remove that excess. It's very, very therapeutic for me in a way. I don't know. It just, I don't know. I love this step.
And then I like to take a mini buffer and just buff the shine off of all the nails so that I'm able to go in with my nail art. So this week has started spring break for my kiddos and I have to work, unfortunately. I mean, I do have time, but like everyone that we want to spend spring break with is still going to have work in school. So it's kind of like... Do we want to travel to another city and sit at someone's house all day and do nothing? I mean, another city so we can do things, I guess, while we're waiting. But, you know, we're like really family oriented. So it would be really just to go and spend time with family. But again, the kids there have spring break. Um, my cousin slash sister, she has work all day. So... I just thought like we might as well stay home and I could find things for us to do after I get off work. Um, and then maybe next weekend we'll take a trip, you know, down for the last weekend and find something to do with them. But I just I really wanted to spend my spring break away, but we just we can't, um, you know, spend time with who we want. So we're just going to stay home and chill and vibe we like to play games with each other a lot and do different things so they'll be fine it's just a little sad that we can't have the same spring break to just really enjoy each other so now i'm going in with the design and again i could not think for the life of me what i wanted to put on these nails the base color alone was just fine for me and i feel like if i wasn't doing youtube a lot of times i would just do like a base on my nails and wear it plain um, because they do look really nice with a good top coat or a matte top coat it's really nice with just a natural shade um, but of course we're doing videos so I had to think of a design and right now I'm applying my McCartney foil glue and I am making like a side fringe on my index so I mapped out where I wanted it to be and then now I'm just filling in that portion with the nail foil glue and I am going to give this a 60 second cure in my lamp so once I give it the 60 second cure in the lamp I do wait in a additional 30 seconds and then I go in to apply the foil so I have this leopard print very colorful foil that I've had forever and y'all know I love leopard print so I can do any like color combination or whatever it just works for me uh, so I wait the 30 seconds and then I just apply it to my nail um, sometimes I use a silicone tool this video I just use my fingers and I'm just rubbing it into that nail for a glue um, until I feel like it's ready to transfer and then I pull it off and get a very nice transfer so I didn't show it there because what happened with this nail set is I did this design at least three different times before I actually got it and I changed the foil because at first I was going to do this really cute snake print foil I have it was like blue with purple but you really couldn't see the purple too too much and I definitely wanted that to be a part of the scheme for the rhinestones I was using I felt like it would just really be nice if it was like a mixture of like purple and other colors but it just didn't show like I wanted so I filed it off and went back in with this one also I was just thinking because at first my foil glue wasn't working like I wanted it to and it was kind of frustrating me a bit but I forgot about the shelf life so once you open up a product it always has a shelf life on it so if you open it then you go by that shelf life once you open it. And I've had this McCartney nail foil glue forever. Um, so I think I need to throw it out and get a new one. Just because, again, it wasn't really working like it was supposed to at first. Eventually, it got with the program. But at first, it was giving me such a time. And I was just, like, getting really frustrated. And I had to file the design off at least three different times. So as I was rambling on my middle and my ring, I did a V-tip french with um the nail foil glue and then on my pinky i'm gonna do another side french in the other direction and then on my thumb i'm gonna do the same thing as well a side french So again, I did cure everything for 60 seconds, waited an additional 30 seconds, and now I'm going in to apply the foil. And this foil, 
was kind of like sticking it to itself and the design was coming off which is what made me want to use it just to kind of get it out of the way and just get rid of anything that was left because this foil I've had at least two years now so first time ever using it and I just wanted to get a design out of it before I got rid of it because again it was acting really crazy once I pulled it out and saw that like a lot of pieces were naturally missing from it sitting I just decided to use it and get it over with so I'm just rub rub rubbing and then I remove the foil and get a very nice transfer I love doing nail foils I feel like I'm really really good at it and I always get a really good design. I'm sorry it's a little sped up. It's just the video was super long. So didn't want to take anything out. And I didn't want to make it too long. So I sped it up a tad bit. So that we're able to see the entire design. But again just a little sped up. Um, if you want a slower video with me doing a slower video with me doing foils i think i have one coming i want to say i do where i went a little slower um so that you can actually see um but this just typically putting the foil glue down and then and then allowing it to cure and then you know you want to wait just so it could get like a little bit more tacky before placing the foil down so that it does transfer really really nice so whatever you're trying to put down should just transfer very very nice and smooth i love foils it's a very quick and easy way to get a nice design without too much effort or work very beginner friendly so that's it with the foil laid down and and um it's a pill off this one was a pill off so i well actually it wasn't a pill off what happened was this one i wore for like the the nail set as just off siesta for like a whole week so i hadn't like filed it or nothing i wore this for a whole week and then the day before i decided to take them off so i normally take my nails off every friday i did the design real quick and then i took it off so i only used top coat but i normally would use like rhinestone glue so i couldn't figure out what to do with this hand for the life of me and i literally ended up doing it and taking it right off so i'm using these rhinestones i got from a cart where they shift from like a green a purple a blue really really pretty and i thought it went really well with this foil so for the index and the pinky and the thumb all of the side fringes i decided to put a really big one in the center and going across it either way just put smaller ones all the way down um to where that side french ends and give that a 60 second cure and i love how these nails came out i was so upset that i thought about this design on the last day and ended up having to take them off because i definitely would have enjoyed wearing these for a full week they were so freaking gorgeous and these rhinestones are like some of my favorite that i have in my collection definitely love the shift in them it's just really really pretty And then for my middle and my ring finger, again, I'm applying the top coat. I'm gonna leave that wet. And for this one, I'm placing the rhinestones down the center of the nail, like in the middle of that V-tip French. And again, just the, the shift in color on these rhinestones was everything to me. So for the rhinestone application, I only showed the index in the middle because of course, all of the others were pretty much the same, just on different fingers, obviously. Um, once I got these applied, I did do a 60 second cure in my lamp. Off camera, I applied some cuticle oil and I'll be back in just a moment with the final look.
And here is the finished set. They just went so well. I love it. Uh, everything about it, the foil, the bling. But comment down below and let me know what you think of this very easy, simple set. And if you've made it this far into the video, I definitely would love it if you would like, comment, and subscribe. And hit your post notification bell so you don't miss any of my future sets. I thank you all for joining me today and I'll see you in my next one. Remember to be the very best you that you can be. And much love to all.